Hey everybody and welcome back to the workbench. Today we're going to be building our first proper long range rig. Now in order to get into long range there are quite a few things we need to think about. So without further ado let's get into what I'm going to be building and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, this is my Pilot Frames rig. It has been for a while my sort of go-to freestyle rig uh, and I've always uh, sort of liked it. it. It's a nice frame it's running the Bartel F4 with some Emacs ESCs and Emacs red bottoms and it's just a really nice cruiser but um, it's never been optimized for long range and I want to take that step now. So I've got a few things and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. So the biggest thing we're going to be doing, we're going to be upgrading to the FR Sky R9M module. Uh, this is, as I'm sure most, most FPV enthusiasts know, uh, a really, a, a really quite decent but low cost uh, long range module. It's been on uh, on offer in all these sorts of places for only thirty dollars recently, uh, and it ships with the module uh, with a sort of basic uh, basic antenna and a R nine mm receiver, which is one of these really nice micro receivers. Now the thing is, I got this shipped with EU LBT firmware, which I need because I am in Europe. I need to be able to transmit on 868 megahertz as opposed to 915 megahertz, which is sort of the most common in the US. The problem is on the EU firmware, this is locked to 500 milliwatts output, output power. And I don't really like that. However, there is a new firmware out. It is the uh, Flex firmware in which you can choose whether you transmit or 868 or 915. And on 868, you can take your power all the way up to one watt. There are a few, uh, few other differences I'm not gonna go into, but those are sort of the biggest ones. Uh, but in order to get the Flex firmware, you actually need to put uh, OpenTX 2.2.3 on your, on your Tyrannus, which uh, isn't actually isn't actually properly out yet, so you'll be using Nike builds. So that's a bit of a sketch factor there, but I think we're gonna be okay. Now, as for the rest of this build, I'm gonna be committing a bit of a cardinal sin, but I'm going with uh, TBS Unify um, for the video because it is just the best video transmitter, at least in my opinion, which I know isn't everything. But this is a TBS Unify Pro. And we're going to be pairing that with just a classic TBS Triumph. And last but not least, we're also going to be adding one of these. This is a Chinese GPS module. You can get these for about ten dollars, and uh, it'll do the it'll do the trick. I think. There we go. Uh, I think it'll do the trick just fine, and giving me some basic GPS coordinates. So, in the quite likely event that I crash really far away from where I am, at least I can find the last known coordinates. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna install the new firmware uh, on the Tyrannus, set up the uh, set up the R9M, do a bit of a rebuild of the pilot frames, install our, all our new parts, and then we're gonna take it out for a maiden. Stay tuned.
So as you could hear, there was a lot of wind that day, so you can't really hear me over the wind. Uh, but I'll just come in here and tell you, uh, we finished the build and it went pretty well. Uh, I was happy with how it turned out and everything was working pretty good. We did have one small issue during the build. Uh, the early versions of the Bardwell F4, which is the flight controller that I was using, uh, while they have enough UARTs, uh, one of the UARTs has, uh, doesn't have a TX pad, it only has an RX pad. So I wasn't actually able to uh, put the GPS module on there. We're gonna have to get a controller with more full UARTs for that. Uh, I've already ordered one, the Foxier F405, and I'll be adding it onto the build later. Now the plan here is to just uh, do do a few flights and see see how our range does. Uh, the trick to testing long range equipment is to just take it a little bit at a time. See where your boundaries are, see where you start to lose RSSI and then uh, expand from there. So let's get into it, let's do a couple of test flights and see how it works. Now I've overlaid some parts of my OSD for you here, uh, in the bottom right you can see the amps uh, currently being drawn and the milliamps, milliamp hours drawn in total, while on the left you can see the battery voltage and the RSSI. And right away you can see that I'm having RSSI drops at maybe just one or two hundred meters. Uh, and they're pretty significant drops, they're just dropping down to like 50s and even 40s, uh, which is uh, concerning. Uh, and it's weird because uh, then in between it just goes back up to 99. This is uh, our second test flight. Uh, I changed a couple of the settings there and just decided to go back out and see if I could get some different results. But we're still just getting our side drops as you can see at a pretty short distance. So obviously there's a problem that we need to figure out. Alright, so it's really cold outside and it's really difficult to fly. Um, yeah, I just I screwed up because I didn't realize it's glove season yet. Anyway, um, we had some problems um, getting our side drops. As you can as you can see, I'm getting our side drops at fairly short range. Uh, so that's pretty surprising. I tried running on um, both 500 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. Um, and I tried running the VTX on both 500 and 800 milliwatts. Uh, it basically seemed to have no effect. I kept getting RSSI drops somewhere around 200 to 300 meters down to like, you know, 50s and even 40s. So, I mean, I don't feel safe flying any further than that. And it's weird because the RSSI would be at 99 and then it would drop down really quickly. Uh, the reason I'm not going at one watt, uh, 500 milliwatts, <coughs> is that uh, I seem to have made some mistake when flashing the flex firmware in which I can choose my region but I can't go up above 500 milliwatts uh, transmitting power on the uh, on the EU when I have the EU channel selected so 868 milliwatts. Anyway, uh, we've got a couple of things to figure out uh, why I'm getting our side drops. I'm going to do a little bit of research uh, but that video is going to have to be part two of this. So. Um, 
yeah, that's gonna be it for this time. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the quad though. I mean, it flies good. Uh, I have to tune the pits a little bit, but it's pretty nice to fly and I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the build and I'm happy with how it looks. So uh, hopefully I don't have to change that too much. Other, other than that, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for part two. Uh, I would also ask you to please consider liking and subscribing. Um, any comment you wanna leave, any anything you can do to help me figure out what exactly is wrong with you, much appreciated. Uh, but if, if not, uh, I'm always gonna update the next video to uh, basically say what was wrong. Anyway, uh, I'll catch you next time.